Hi folks, welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. Today we're going to talk about SharePoint lists and how to customize the forms we're using Power Apps. Stay tuned, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, make sure that you subscribe. Hi, so we are now here in our SharePoint list. I'm using the milestone tracker we've been using for uh, one of the last videos I remember. And uh, as you can see here, if you select new, you will be prompted with this default SharePoint form where you can enter, edit, and create new items for your SharePoint list. So at the right hand corner here, you can see that you can do a couple of uh, customization in this form, layout, edit the columns, hide columns, and so on and so forth. But I'm mostly interested in this customize with Power Apps function. This has been uh, um, uh, uh, available for a while now. Uh, it's nothing new, but uh, I think it's very powerful and uh, it can it offers you the possibility to create a form which which is much easier on the eye and maybe also has a little bit more logic in it. So let's take a look. So if you select customize with Power Apps, it will open now the Power Apps portal. This might take a while, so I will jump to the section where it has loaded. So as you can see here, it loaded the Power Apps portal. And um, we can see that we are connected to the milestone tracker because the data source in the top left hand corner it says milestone tracker and that that's an indicator for that and uh, but we are seeing here a couple of stuff missing so if you select the sharepoint form we can see this is the 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 form um, where the where the data will be shown and we can see only milestone here so let's take a look to our sharepoint list and see what data we need to show let's go back to uh, the site content and open our milestone tracker again so here we are showing project name, customer name, customer code, PM, milestone, milestone value, and these two as well. Mm -hmm. So let's try to bring those into the form as well. Go back to our milestone tracker in uh, Power Apps and uh, make sure that you have selected the SharePoint form on the left hand side. And on the right hand side now you can see the edit section. So here it's where it says fields, select edit fields. And here's where you can add new fields. So select add field and we need our project name, our customer name, our customer code, select add. We need our PM, milestone value, ready for billing and approval status. So these were the columns that were missing from uh, the form. Select add. And now you will be able to see those columns as well here. So now we will, you will be able to see the columns in the canvas as well. But let's try and customize how it looks like a little bit. So I don't like this plain white uh, background. For that, make sure that you have selected the SharePoint form. And here at the bottom, it says color. So let's take like a light blue. Yeah, I think this looks nice. And what we can also do is uh, rearrange the columns. So I don't like that milestone is at the top. In our SharePoint list, we have milestone after the PM name. So let's do that as well. For that, make sure that you are in the section uh, of the SharePoint form. And here where we have the fields, you can select the milestone and drag and drop it wherever you want it. So we said we want the milestone after the PM name. So that's where we're going to drop it. And now, as you can see, it rearranges in the canvas as well. Next, I want to make the view uh, look a little bit more friendly. So for that, let's bring like a darker banner on the top of the form and uh, put the name of the, of the SharePoint list. So, so make sure that you have selected the SharePoint form again. And then here, as you can see, the borders of that SharePoint form in the canvas. So if you drag and drop that below, it creates like a white space here on the back where, where nothing happens actually. It's just, this will never change. It's just a static background. And what you can do there is insert in the insert section, a label. So the label will be put there and we can make it bigger or smaller. And what we can also do here is write a text in it. So let's call this milestone form 
or let's call it as milestones. We can make it a little bit bigger, like 20 font, and make it semi bold, and make it uh, so that it is in the middle. And I want to change the background of this label as well. So here at the bottom it says color. Let's make the background darker blue. And now that we cannot read the font anymore, let's turn it into white. So that looks much nicer. So now we can resize the, 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 the SharePoint form and bring it to the top. So now it has a little bit like a like a header at the top. And uh, I also want to put a footer as well. So let's select the canvas again and make it a little bit shorter and make some space at the bottom. So what you can do in Power Apps, which is really cool, is you can select the media and then select the image function and it will bring you this default image where, which you can resize as you want. I make it a little bit smaller and bring it at the bottom. So now this image has, in the formula bar, it says sample image. That's why it's showing this sample in gray. But we can bring whatever you want in there. So we want to show the user's profile picture, for example. For that, you just have to write user. And Power Apps, you will see it, 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 that it is wrong, but it will show you what's the right formula for that. So it, you select that. Now it is showing you, OK, you need to close the parentheses. But still, it is not completed because it is looking at the user, which is me, and it doesn't know what exactly to show. Should it show my name? Should it show my picture or my email address or whatever information it's 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 saved in my um, back end uh, for my account? So uh, for that, we will need to select the dot, and now we can see a drop down of, of different options. So we can have the image, email, full name, and so on. Since it's a media uh, picture, we want to have the image. So if you select that, it should bring up my picture from my account. Yeah, there it is. So I will also like to bring two labels. So let's select label, drag it to the bottom. I want to resize it. Uh, doesn't have to be that big. So that looks nicer. And now in the text section where it, it says text, make sure that you uh, delete it because this is static. It's nothing dynamic because when you uh, put it in quotes, it will never change, right? It's just a string. But uh, if you write the function, the function will be dynamic, will always change. For example, for the user, it says user, it doesn't say my name. So it knows, okay, now I am logged in into this SharePoint list, it's showing my picture. If someone else logs in, it will show their picture. So the same we want to do also with this label and show the name of that user. So let's write user again. Power Apps will prompt us with the right syntax for that. We will have to close the parentheses, put a dot, and now we want to show the full name. So let's select full name and it should bring up my name. It's showing it here as well. So there it is. But I don't want to show it like that. Let's make it a little bit prettier, semi bold, and bring it to the right so it's closer to the picture. Now I want to put another label at the bottom showing the, the, the current time and date. I don't want to create a new label since uh, I will have to resize it again. If you uh, select the label you just created and Control C, Control V, it creates the exact copy of that label. So now we can go here and edit the, the, the formula. Let's delete full name and let's write um, Let's delete this uh, formula because we don't need to show, we don't want to show the, the username anymore. We want to show the current date and time. So for that, it's pretty simple. You just have to write now. And Power Apps will prompt with the right syntax. It is now. You will have to close the parentheses since this is a function. And as you can see, it will show the uh, date and time which you are um, currently using it. So that's it for uh, this. Um, Canvas, I think it looks nicer than it than the default one. Let's take a look at how it looks like in, in the SharePoint list. For that, you will have to go to File, Save, and make sure that you publish it to SharePoint. Otherwise, you will not be able to see it there. So let's publish. Now it says all say changes are saved and published. Let's go back to our SharePoint list and select New. You will see that it is not there yet because you have to refresh the screen. So as you can see here, now this is the new form we just created in Power Apps. I think it looks pretty cool and uh, it's easier on the eye. And for the amount of columns that we have, it's 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 okay that it's showing in portrait mode. I, 
I don't think that it's, we are missing any information here uh, because of the size of the form. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, it's showing my name and my picture and the time I'm, I'm editing this. Uh, don't be uh, confused for because of this white space here. I'm using a 34 inch screen, uh, which I think um, it's it's uh, not that yeah it's I, I will I would have to resize the the form to to fit for my screen, but on other screen then it will be looking too big. So you need to take care of that as well. You need to test it with around what's the perfect uh, fit for for your uh, users' screens. Let's take a look how it looks like if we um, make this in the portrait mode, because you will probably have also multiple uh, more columns than that, and you will, don't want your users to scroll down for, for eternity. So let's go back to our uh, Power Apps form and uh, the file section, settings, you have here the screen size and orientation. So we were using the portrait mode. Let's select landscape. You'll see it will go in landscape mode and you can either have it in small, large or custom size. I will go with large since I'm on a big screen and select apply. Go back to canvas and we will see that this looks terrible. It has messed up all our the complete form and uh, we have to redo this uh, again. It won't take that long, but it is good to uh, keep in mind that when you change the sizes, make sure you do that at the beginning and not after completing your form. So let's select the SharePoint form and resize it so that it looks nice and reasonable. Bring it to the end, select the label, and bring that as well to the end so that it's nice in the middle. So we have to resize the SharePoint form at the bottom as well. The picture is looking very small. Let's resize it as well. Bring it at the end, select the date that has also to be resized. Okay, and the name as well next to it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Maybe someone has a longer name. You don't want to go into on two lines. So this is looking nice. So what you can also do is if you select the SharePoint form, it, it, on the right hand side, you can see the number of columns it should show. So now it's on one. If you select two, it will split this into two sections, which I think it looks nicer. Uh, it's a, it, it, the user won't have to scroll anymore. But you, you need to, you need to make sure that it makes sense. So for example, project name, customer name, customer code. It's, this makes sense for me. But maybe uh, if you have like a more, many more columns, you might have something next to project name here that doesn't make sense uh, for the user to edit. Um, it's small things, but um, yeah, you will you will notice that uh, on while uh, editing it. So let's uh, take a look how this looks like in our SharePoint list. Let's select File, Save and Publish to SharePoint. If we go back to our SharePoint list, we'll see that the, um, the first edit is still there because you have to refresh your page. Sometimes it takes one or two, uh, two refreshes. Let's see. Select New. It looks like one is enough. As you can see, this is now the new SharePoint uh, edit form in landscape mode. I think it looks uh, a little bit too much. It's way too big. Uh, you will have to adjust the size of the font and the, and the tables and the cards. But this is how we do it and for, for testing purposes, I think this is okay. So next I want to show you how to disable the form. Um, if you don't like it anymore or and you want to go back to the default SharePoint form, you can always do that. So for that, you have to select the gear at the top right corner of your screen, select list settings. And here you have the form settings. As you can see, it says here, use a custom form created in Power Apps, which is the one we're using at the moment. And from here, you can also go to Power Apps and modify it or see the versions and so on. We want to go and select use the default SharePoint form to go back to the SharePoint default form. Select OK. This will bring you back to the settings section. Select the milestone tracker, which is the, or the SharePoint list name you have. Give it a second. And if you select now new, it should show you the default SharePoint form. So nothing is broken, everything is back to normal. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I think you do some really cool stuff with SharePoint forms and uh, bring uh, some uh, color and uh, better user experience for your users who, that are um, using the SharePoint list you created. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe and let me know if you want to see more videos with Power Apps. Uh, I enjoy working with Power Apps as well as much as uh, with the rest of the Power Platform. 
Let me know and see you in the next one.